Brad, straight in with the, the headlines. Chris Froome said this week uh, that he struggled to trust you in the 2012 Tour de France after racing the uh, the Vuelta with you. So he's been on Nico Rosberg's podcast, yeah. the, the, the former Mercedes driver, obviously. Clearly what they've tried to do is draw a comparison between Rosberg and Hamilton at Mercedes and yourself and, and Froome mm. at Sky and how uh, team orders one man yeah, eventually yeah. in team sport has to be subservient to the other. So Froome said, the difficult part for me was trusting him as the leader, so him being you, Brad, given that in Sir the... Bradley, in, yeah. in, yep, Sir Bradley, sorry. Yeah. Given that in the last big race, he won't say at the time, the Vuelta Espana, I'd gone there to support him and he fell apart in the last few days. Going into the Tour de France, I had this in my mind. I was thinking, I'm doing a job for this guy, but if he falls apart in the last few yeah. days, I need to be in the position to take over again. I wish you'd have told me. But <laughs> no, I mean that, that. I mean, you know, that's Chris's opinion. As I said, I spoke last few weeks about here. You know, that's the world we're all in. Maybe I wasn't the best communicator at the time. The year I had a bad couple of days towards the end of the Volta. I had broken collarbone six weeks earlier. I still had a plate in. I couldn't really get out of the saddle properly. I didn't expect to be in that position. And to be honest, I think if Chris is being honest, well, he didn't expect to be. He couldn't scratch his ass before that point and found himself second <laughs> in the Volta with a week to go. And at the start of the race Dave's coming to me saying I don't think we're going to sign him next year what do you think Brad and I said well he's proved himself here in the team time trust I think you should keep him you know we know he's got an engine mm. and here he is now so I think you know that's the way teams work it's all a bit incest- incestuous and, and no one really communicates I, I'll be the first to admit I wasn't the best team leader in the world so communication wasn't my strong point and um, we found ourselves second and third going into the last couple of days mm. of the Walter Espana and it was his you know the point for him that leaped his career forward really and gave him the confidence to do what he did but I mean as I say you know I'm not going to sit here and slag him off because you know I think he's a great athlete and this that and the other but that's the world you're in at that time and Mm. you know I take responsibility for it as well but it is what it is. Given that that 2012 tour was so time trial heavy and it was a course Mm. absolutely suited to you which is obviously a a huge reason why Sky made you the main man for that tour. Is he being a little bit unfair you know given that you were so dominant in the TTs? Well that year I hadn't lost a race I yeah. I did win Paris Nice, Romandie, Dauphiné. I hadn't lost a time trial all year. And I was leading the tour by three minutes going into the last couple of days with a 55 kilometre time trial. There was no signs I was going to crack. I hadn't cracked all year. I didn't have a broken collarbone. And I was. So, you know, maybe, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get myself in too much trouble because you know what the media are like. But um, yeah, that, that, that was it, really. I did win. Don't I? It's all lifts and butts, isn't it? But um, he's gone on to win four since and could potentially win five this year. So, Matt, what's your take on this one? I think it's a matter of semantics, just how your interpretation of the word trust. Mm. It's trust in, is he talking about trust in Brad in terms of his doing things behind his back or not telling him about his condition or is it just didn't trust Brad that he could hold out physically which is a completely different kettle of fish if you don't trust somebody because you think they're going to lie and deceive you then it's very very different than actually trusting somebody not you know I, I don't trust it I don't think you, you know you capitulated at the end of the Walter that's what he said mm. you know it's the matter of what what does he mean by trust I think if he means trust as in terms of not trusting Bradley as a person as a point of view it could be that he didn't trust trust him last night on a grand tour and I suppose I guess I see I see yeah, his point I mean, but I guess it's just the interpretation yeah. of yeah, trust I mean, really but as, Again, we were both in that kitchen of kind of both extremely competitive, both wanting to win. He, you know, he was fighting for his life for a contract at that time. Yeah. I think at the time he had one option on the table because we were rooming together, and he was it was talking about going to Garmin, Cannondale, Chipotle, whatever they were at the time. And um, in the end, he got second, and Dave signed him up and, and saw him, you know, as his cash cow for the next few years. But this is the nature of athletes at that level. We're all a bit insecure and always looking over each other's backs and things. Mm. And you know, that environment was sort of created a little bit of sky as well. The competitiveness there from Dave and almost still is really and it works somehow that it somehow works by playing all these big stars off against each other uh, and there is an element of trust between riders and there has to be but I, I wouldn't say they'd bet their houses on it you know like we were watching the Roubaix running today Chat and we were about talking it, about yeah. Gilbert does he keep it running or does he wait for Yves Lampard mm. which is my chance to win Roubaix you know so there is that sort of insecurity at sport at that level particularly in cycling and it's all this big happy family till there's a race on the line and you know but that's Chris's opinion I mean you know it is what it is I don't claim to be the same person I am now that I was sat mm. in the Vuelta you know I was a bit of a as I said the last few weeks you know I have to be a bit of a c- I was a bit of a c- then that's why I won the tour but you know I can't completely detach from that person now and I don't recognize any of myself mm. as I am now but that's his opinion it might be an insecure opinion it might not you know but that's the way he feels and potentially that might be why he's made such a good career since. Sean, you have it in a similar situation? Padre van der Poel, dear. <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> yes, well, there was a number of times. Um, well, you know, in cycling, 
It's difficult to trust somebody when you're in a team and you're fighting for the same objective, the same win. And, you know, on a bike, you're going uphill, you're going downhill. You know, you can always say, well, I thought you were there. I thought you were following me. I didn't think you were getting dropped. There's all of that to it. So it's uh, uh, it's difficult to trust anybody. And I know from my time in, in my career of cycling, yes, it's... Uh, you always have to uh, be careful trusting riders. When it comes to the very important moment and that opportunity, that win is there to take and it's between your two riders of the same team, I think uh, you can never trust somebody 100%. Mm. Yeah, but if you also watch at the Tour last year, it was only at the 11th knock-ins. Froome was still trying to win that race in the Tour de France, you know. And there's an element of him thinking, well, I've won the Tour four times. You know, Is Geraint going to last up this last mountain or are we going to see... So, and, and I think Grian said it in his book, didn't he, that in some of the meetings he was like, what the hell's going on here, you know? Are we not? Are we riding for me or are we riding for Chris? You know what's going on? So even at that level at Sky with all the happiness that's projected from that team, there's still this insecurity where yeah. G's writing in a book further down the line that I wasn't sure what was going on, you know? It's that kind of... But that's what it's like cycling. Everyone wants to win. It's that competitive environment.